Hey, Tyler. Um, one of the things you guys have been doing well in the last sort of five, six games is your neutral zone defending. A lot of it seems to be to sort of down ice pressure. The Flames describe it as being like uh, a full court press in basketball. Do you think that's uh, an apt analogy? Sorry, sorry, it's a little loud here. Can you kind of repeat that? Yeah, no worries. Uh, you guys have really improved your neutral zone defending, it feels like, sort of the last five, six games. The Flames described it as being like a full court press. Do you think that's a, a good comparison? Yeah, I, you know, I think we're just, you know, the last five, six games, I really think we've, you know, started to find our identity as a group, uh, you know, figuring out the things we have to do to, to stay as aggressive as we have been. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is, you know, our positioning of our F3 and, you know, they've been really aware, our forwards have been really aware of getting above guys so we can, we can stay aggressive on the puck. And just in similar terms, you mentioned the high forward, but one of the things I really noticed is how much you guys have a defenseman pitching and how much that's the responsibility of a, of a forward to pick up on the backside. Was that something you guys just weren't executing well enough earlier in the season? That's why there were so many odd man rushes? Yeah. Uh, that's probably as simple as it gets. Um, <laughs> you know, like I said, it, uh, you know, we first 10 games, I, I think it was pretty clear. We were finding our identity as a, as a group. Um, you know, we did a lot of, we, we watched a lot of video, you know, tried to figure out the things that we needed to start doing to, to become a team that was hard to play against. And, uh, you know, I really think we're, we're finding ourselves, especially in the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, for us defensemen, uh, you know, however we, however aggressive we are, you know, it all depends on, you know, all five guys on the ice. If everyone's doing their job, we can stay aggressive like we want to be. And uh, we just have to continue that and, and try and keep doing it on a consistent basis. And I guess that's sort of an example of when you really don't have preseason games, there's just not things that you can practice in a proper game like setting, is it? Yeah. And, you know, also when you, you know, with this year and how busy it is, there's not a lot of practice time within the season as well. So um, it's no excuse. It's just uh, it's just how things are this year for every group, for every team. And, uh, you know, we, we really like the way our game is trending and we just want to try and keep getting better at it. What, what did you make of the Jets last night? They talked a lot about how they were sort of prepared, I suppose, for you guys, that, that you weren't going to play necessarily a wide open game. Like maybe you had a rip reputation for but they knew from the, the previous game coming into last night that you guys were really focused on playing kind of a hard edge tight in in close kind of game i thought it was a pretty tight game um it was a good hockey game i thought they were a little bit uh quicker than us the first half of the game and then i really thought we got our feet going the second half um you know look, you look at the one uh other than the empty netter you look at the one goal that was scored as really unlucky break uh with the puck jumping over a stick um you know, other, you know, other than the goal is, is really tight by both teams. Uh, you know, both teams weren't, uh, you know, deviating from what they were trying to do within their system, made for a really tight game. And we're expecting the same thing tomorrow night. Uh, and, you know, it's a big two points. You know, we need to make sure we come out ready. Thanks, Alex. Yep, thank you. Okay, we'll go now to Ian McIntyre. <laughs> hey, Tyler. Um, as you point out, the, the team's play has been much better the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, it's probably not a surprise that that still is hard to win, even when you're playing better. Do you, how hard is it not to be discouraged or, or focused on the results and, and stick to the process? Well, I've been, I've, I've been on teams in the past who, you know, uh, that weren't really in it uh, pretty early in the season. And, you know, I don't believe that's the case for us at all. Uh, you know, in this situation, you don't have time to dwell on a loss or, you know, uh, if things don't go well one night, you got to come out ready the next night because you're most likely playing within the next two days. And, uh, you know, the thing you're starting to realize about, you know, playing all the teams in one division is, you know, a, a drop off isn't as big as it looks and a, and a, you know, a push in points isn't as big as it looks the other way either. So um, you just got to keep, uh, keep grinding, keep uh, trying to improve as a group. And, uh, you know, 
couple game swings here and there can, you know, it's going to change the standings throughout the whole season. It's going to come right down to the end. And we just have to make sure we keep pushing. And just to clarify that, uh, not as big a gap because they're all four point games. You can catch up or lose ground. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I, we didn't have the, you know, first, first 10, 12 games that we wanted, obviously, um, you know, but the way we've been playing of late, uh, you know, we're going to win, we're going to win a lot of games playing like that. And, uh, you know, we just have to keep pushing, you know, every team is, you know, it's every team is can win in this league and it's going to be close right to the end. We just have to make sure we come ready to play every night. What did you think of Forbort going after uh, Hoglander at the end of the game last night? I think Hogs got a pretty good lick on him earlier in the game. I kind of forget it, but, um, you know, it's one of those scrums you just, you know, you got kind of used to game by game. And, uh, you know, coming into tomorrow night, we're just kind of focused on the two points. Thank you. All right. Unless we have any more hands pop up, we'll take our last one here for Tyler from David Quadrelli. Hey, Tyler. Um, you've kind of taken Ollie under your wing. You've been very vocal with him, even when you're not on the ice with him, which I noticed last night. Um, but was there anybody in your rookie year or early in your career that kind of played that mentor role for you and kind of inspired you to do the same with Ollie? Um, a lot of guys. That's I'm going to feel bad. I'm going to forget a lot of names here. But, um, you know, my first D partner in Hank Talinder, he was – I couldn't have asked for a better partner to come into the league and, and kind of take me under his wing. And, uh, you know, as a young guy and not kind of knowing what to expect, he, uh, you know, he really shouldered a lot of the load, helped me out. And that goes for a lot of the, the older veterans that were on the team when I stepped in, um, Craig Reve, Tony Lidman, um, you know, and that, that was just my really early years, you know, the years to follow that we had some new guys too that came in and, or big help. So uh, certainly I take uh, my experiences with those guys and, and try and help out the young guys stepping in now, now that I'm a bit of an older guy. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, I think Oli's game has uh, just gotten better and better. Uh, you can tell, I think he just needed time. And uh, the fact that he's getting more games under his belt now, I think he's, I think he's played really well. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, and sorry, just uh, double checking here. Ian, do you have another question? Actually, I do, if that's okay, Marcus. Yep. I'll take advantage of the sparse attendance today to sneak in one more. Uh, Tyler, you mentioned, um, uh, you know, talking about Oli, and Oli at least had a chance to be with the group last summer. Uh, Hoglander hasn't. How, how badly do you feel that uh, under these circumstances, a team's not able to kind of welcome a new player, especially a guy who's far from home at a young age, welcome a new player into the group the same way you would in years past. Is that sort of difficult from a team building standpoint or even just a human standpoint, making the kid feel not so alone? I don't, I don't think so. I, I think within the room, uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, you know, we, we talk with hogs every day. He's, he's a really good young kid. Um, and I, I guess the biggest difference would be uh, you really start, you know, a lot of the team bonding goes on when you have like team dinners on the road. So, you know, we don't get that experience this year and, and hogs won't, uh, won't get to experience that yet, but uh, you know, he's, he's settling in just fine. All right. Thanks Tyler.